we are going to talk about acids and bases, right? We talked a little bit about acids and bases, but this is when I actually go over what acids and bases are, right? So acids are normally substances that will do what? Based on the only definition that we know, does anybody know? What does an acid do? It donates H pluses, as you call it. So it donates protons, right? So the acid, I always like to have something that I always think about. So when I think about an acid, I think about the acid that is in your stomach. What is the name of that acid? Hydrochloric, yes. Hydrochloric acid. So that's the one that I tend to think about. And when I think about it, when you put it in water, it's going to have an, it's gonna dissociate it's a strong acid, so it dissociates 100%, and we're gonna have an H plus, which I told you that is truly an H3O plus and a Cl minus, right? Do we so, write that for the common acids? No, I'm gonna give you the common acids as basis. I'm just telling you, when I think of acids, I think of hydrochloric acid, which is in your stomach. I also think of this acid, what is this? Yeah, but what is the name of the acid? Acetic acid, yeah? So I think of that. I think of other ones. There are some fruits that have acids. Which ones are those? Citrus. Citric acid, yeah, citrus fruits, like lemon, right, and oranges and things like that. And what acid do they have? Citric acid. Citric acid. I also think about the acid that is in milk. Do you know what acid is in milk? Or those not? Lactic acid, right? Those are the things I think about acids. They are said to taste sour, right? Acids are sour. Bases are not donors, they are acceptors, right? So in redox, we were transferring electrons. Here, we're gonna be transferring protons. So I give a proton, you take a proton. Whatever takes the proton or the acceptor is the base. They are said to taste bitter, bitter. So um, if you want it, that's the big introduction to acids and bases. They are very common. Now the example, the real life examples that you can, that we can talk about are, like I said, vinegar, acetic acid. What acids do you have in your sodas? Carbonic and one that starts, this one, what is that one? Phosphoric acid, those are in your sodas. Um, citric acid, then there is lactic acid. A lot of foods are acidic. It's hard to find a basic food. It's hard to find a basic food. And as you see, a lot of cleaners are basic, but we don't have many foods. I'm sure there are foods that are basic. The one that comes to, a, to mind to me is one that I've been asking people to, um, if you buy it and eat it and show me a picture of you eating it, I'll give you a bonus point. Why? Because it's so good for you that I want you to at least try it. And if you go to a tropical country, uh, this particular fruit is humongous, just like a watermelon. Papayas are that big. Here, papayas are little tiny and it's hard to find them ripe. If they are pale in color and they're tough, they're not ripe and they're disgusting. But if you find them really ripe and you like them, lucky for you because it's a really good fruit. You don't have to take, uh, you know, in our stomach we have hydrochloric acid. Sometimes we, because of a stress or because of whatever, we get acid reflux, right? There's hydrochloric acid going up and down and it kind of burns your esophagus. So we take things to help with that. If we live really stressful lives, the lining in our stomach, that mucus layer kind of thins out and then we end up having um, heartburn and things like that. So we need to sometimes eat something like um, thumbs, right? Calcium carbonate and other bases that will help you neutralize that acid, right? But papaya will do it. Papaya has a really high pH. It's a very good fruit and it will help with acid reflux or anything else like that. So it's amazing. So I want you to try it. Um, so that's when it comes to acids and bases. Now, this one is another thing that you may or may have not heard of, but it's over the counter, it's milk of magnesia. 
Anybody knows what milk of magnesia is? It's magnesium hydroxide. Maybe. That's the active ingredient. It's a base, right? If you have never heard of it, then you don't know what it can be used for. But um, do you think I can drink this? Yes. I can. If I have, um, if I need a laxative, this will help. It's not uh, a serious laxative, it's for minor things, but if you need it, you can drink. I, I mean, I guess you have to look at the instructions. I haven't done that, but you can. What I have done with this is when I was younger, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it was nine of us, my four siblings and my favorite cousins, and we went everywhere, and when we went to the beach or something, our parents filled us up with this, so we look like white everywhere. It's a type of sunscreen. It's a sunblock, right? Sometimes you have some minerals on the screens, and they just kind of sit on, like zinc oxide, right? They sit on your face. Not zinc. Well, they, they sit on your face, and they protect you from sun rays, but they actually make like a screen. Uh, this is one of those. But a lot of people won't use it as that because you do look like a snowman, right? Um, but we did, we covered our whole bodies with that and that's how we went out to the beach and, um, and it worked. So um, yeah, you can eat those. There are a lot of things like Drano, those are bases. That is sodium hydroxide. <coughs> And you use that in order to get rid of, sometimes it dissolves the hair, sometimes they put bubbles in there. When you have an acid and a base, it will create bubbles, but they will be able to be used to get rid of any plugs that you have. So that's very basic. This one is the one weak base I want you to always remember. And it's the only really weak base that we'll talk a lot about. Does anybody remember that? How to write that? Yeah, and I don't want to write it with red because I like to write bases with blue. Some people are going to think NH3 is an acid because it has an H. It's not. It's ammonia. It's an amine. It's a NH3. It's a weak base. It's the only weak base that we really talk about. The first two columns with an OH are, are strong bases for this class. It's literally not 100% that, but that's what we consider. The first two columns with an OH, we're going to consider them as strong bases. This is our weak base. Now, aluminum hydroxide is not in the first two columns. Is that strong or weak? Weak. We consider it weak because it's not in the first two columns. So, um, ammonia is basically what Windex used to have. There are some Windex now that does not have ammonia, but that is the weak base I want you to know about. Uh, our blood has a pH that is slightly basic or acidic? It's slightly basic, 7.35, right? 7.45 is slightly basic. You have to stay within that range or then you die. So we do have a system to help keep our pH in balance. We've covered this in detail, so and I do have that back there if you need it. This is the stuff that I like to talk about because um, <laughs> I see it used in the industry all the time. Sulfuric acid is one of our strong acids. Which ones are the strong acids, Kate? You need to look at the periodic table. It'll help you with at least three. So it's CL, BR, and I one under the other, right? Skip the HF, HCl, HBr, HI, and then, Lauren, do you know other three? H2SO4, H3PO, There are three, you have H2SO4, there are three oxy acids. H2SO4, which is sulfuric, nitric, and perchloric, right? So you need to know those. This is a strong acid. It's extremely hydrophilic. It loves water. Absolutely loves water. It has a great affinity for water. 
So when you have something like sugar or glucose, it literally, this doesn't have water per se, but it'll grab the hydrogens and oxygens by water and evaporate it, right? So that's what we're seeing here. And it is so cool to see this reaction because um, what you have here that you see growing is just carbon that has been fluffed up. What? Fluffing up carbon? Have you ever whisked an egg? Everybody here? Good for you. So all of you cook except Marshall. Have you ever whisked an egg? Oh, he has to, okay. So when you whisk an egg, what are you doing? Adding air. You're adding air. And what happens when you add air to an egg? Then you put it in the pan, and then what happens? What happens to it when it gets hot? It expands, right? So you whisk and you put these pockets of air, right? And then you put it in the pan, and it gets hot, and the pockets of air expand until the egg dries out, and then the whatever you have comes out, but it leaves the little pockets, right? And then you eat it and it's kind of more filling, but eventually, you just, honestly, you just ate an egg, but it feels more filling. It's kind of like when you eat that soft stuff ice cream, they just put a whole bunch of air in it, right? So you eat more air. And I'm happy to do that because I still feel my good ice cream, but I don't have to eat as much ice cream, right? So anything that is fluffed up that has air, is, I like it. But in this case, it's weird because we're talking carbon, right? the carbon that was in here and as the water is evaporating it makes holes and it makes it grow and then you have a mole of carbon a few moles of carbon and before you know it they have made this humongous structure which looks weird is it like a solid like if you were to go like this oh we're gonna do it and you're gonna feel it it's a solid yeah we're gonna do that in class i already had um, two helpers if you ever want to be a helper you come friday after school and then I ask you to help me with the labs. So they made my solution of hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, and we have it ready for the lab next class. Wait, so that doesn't squish? Like if you no, it's hard. Oh. It's like hard. as it's rising, it's hard? As it's rising, it's, yeah, it's slightly hard, but I, I don't want to touch it then because it's hot and moist, and some of that may be sulfuric acid. But, and I have to let it <coughs> cool a little bit before you all can touch it because it, it can feel fairly hot. It's, it's a very exothermic reaction. The more affinity something has for each other, the faster it happens, the more heat it gives off, right? So this one is extremely, has an extreme affinity for water and it is very, very exothermic. So it is very hot. We'll do some little ones and maybe one big one for the class so that you can see this happen. Um, just a pain to clean that beaker after that. But, um, but it is literally carbon and it's with sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is used in companies to dry. If I have a gas that I don't want it to get water, I can run some sulfuric acid and it will grab all the water. And it will not let uh, my streams get um, the gas that I don't want it to have. So sulfuric acid is very hydrophilic. What is H3PO4, Anna? Yes, phosphoric. NaOH, Bailey? Um, sodium hydroxide. Yeah. Are we writing this for the four common ones? You can, or the ones that we talked about before uh, when we were doing the common acids and bases, any, any of them. Mag the last one is magnesium hydroxide, which is what we had in the um, milk of magnesium, right? Those are very common. And I'm telling you that soft drinks contain phosphoric and carbonic. You all need to know this. This has given some of you a hard time. And they're there. You will have access, if you don't have it already, to this PowerPoint. It's definitely on the study guide on, on this sheet. So, uh, but I'll make sure it's on the rolling calendar. This particular PowerPoint, I'm gonna break it, it's got a lot of information. We only want the beginning. We're just introducing acids and bases. I do want you to watch this video. It's on the rolling calendar and it's here and I'm encouraging all the classes to watch it because uh, it's gonna help you get a jump start. It's gonna help you remember some of the concepts you learned before and maybe I'll fill in some gaps. We're gonna go over everything in there, but I want you to watch it, it's eight minutes. You can watch it and if you, it's a little interesting you can watch it again
characteristics. These are on your worksheet. Characteristics of an acid. We just talked about the fact that it tastes sour, that it is a proton donor, that it turns red, uh, it turns blue leaf paper red. So I always think of acids, a lot of the indicators we use will turn red or will turn blue. Um, lots, of, lots of protons in the solution, H plus or H3O plus, this is really what we have. Um, if you have less than three, it's corrosive and it is regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, it, some of those acids react with metals like magnesium, zinc, and iron to produce hydrogen. Have we ever done any of that? Ali? Have we ever in class used magnesium, zinc, or iron to produce hydrogen when we put an acid on it? Yes, in the penny lab, right? We got all the, we dissolve all the zinc and we make hydrogen and then we exploded it, right? So yeah, we can dissolve metals with acids. We can. If they are more reactive than the hydrogen, it will. Yes. Mean? EPA is the Environmental Protection Agency. So it will regulate that because it's corrosive after that, yes. How are H pluses and H3O pluses the same? Related? Because H pluses don't exist. Okay. We do it because if I were to write um, HCl, it's easy for me to see the H and the Cl when I put it in water. And this is coming in a minute you will see that the H is going to be donated. Water has two lone pairs. And what happens is this H comes over here, and it becomes an H3O plus. But when I separate it many times, I put it like that just to show you that strong acids dissociate. And it's much easier to see how the H and the Cl were formed. But in reality, this H plus will join a water and it will be an H3O plus. It will not be an H plus. H pluses don't exist. It has to be H3O plus. It's the hydronium ion. And we have this in the PowerPoint in a minute. And it's also in your notes. Now, bases, greater than seven, taste bitter, chalky. This definitely tastes chalky. Um, proton acceptors. Greater than 12 is corrosive. So if I tell you which one is worse between a strong acid and a strong base, they're just as bad. Just look at the concentration. Um, if it's greater than 12, it's corrosive, and it will be regulated by the EPA as well. If you have an acid and you have a base, what do you make? Water. Water. So we neutralize an acid with a base and a base with an acid. And neutralizing literally means that the pH becomes seven. It's a neutral pH. We make ordinary water with a pH of seven. Now, um, we also make a salt. And we're gonna see that as we keep going. And acid, this is just a good picture. You know, it's H pluses, which I just told you is not H pluses, is um, an OH minuses. But when you have an acid, you have a high concentration of H3O plus in the solution. And a high concentration means a high or a low pH, Marshall. <coughs> High concentration of H plus is a high or a low pH. That's what will make sense, right? If I have a high concentration, I should have a high pH, but it's backwards. And that's the, I, I hate that, but that's how it works. It's, pH is the negative log, right? And when you have the higher the concentration, literally the lower the pH. So, <clears throat> So let's look at water. What happens when we put water in solution? So I have um, water, we say it's neutral. <clears throat> because when I have water right here, <clears throat> literally, 
and most of it, most of this water is that, is H2O. The water that you all have in your cups, most of it is literally just water. But these water molecules, remember they have this little um, negative sign that will attract the hydrogen. From time to, they're all bumping into each other, right? They are going like that and they're bumping into each other. From time to time, I have my water and this lone pair will literally attract one of the other hydrogens. It'll break it off, it'll get attracted to that negative, break off, making my H3O plus. And the other side will be left with what? That water, once it lost the hydrogen, will be left as what? OH. OH minus. Right? So a very small amount of water that I have here is doing that. How small? One times 10 to the negative seven. At 25 degrees C. So it's temperature dependent. So all the stuff we're gonna do, Emma is at 25 degrees C, all of it. It's at 25 degrees C because that's how much I'm gonna have. So one times 10 to the negative seven, what is the pH of that? Seven. seven. Yeah? Seven. And the POH will be seven too. The negative log of that will be seven as well, right? So the pH and the POH will be seven. Um, and that's what we call it neutral. Neutral, why? Because you have the exact same amount of both of them. You have the exact same amount of H's as OH's, so that's neutral. But it has a pH of seven. So neutral water has a pH of seven. This water should have a pH of seven. However, we know that water at Episcopal is what? Slightly basic. We haven't measured the pH, we should, because bromotamo blue turned what color when I put it in there? Blue. So we knew it was slightly basic, so it's gonna be a little higher. However, we always talk about water about being neutral, right? So a pH of seven means that you have this one times 10 to the negative seven, hydronium ions, that's the concentration. And your concentration, those brackets like that mean concentration um, of OHs is also one times 10 to the negative seven because it's equal, it's neutral. If I had one times 10, oh, actually, let me ask you this question. If the water gets hot, all of a sudden things are moving more, right? Maybe. Do you think they will be more likely to separate or less likely to separate the more they move? Yes. So assume that we are really, really hot. That's an assumption and I'm gonna make it exaggerated. I'm gonna have one times 10 to the negative one. That's a bigger number, right? That one times 10 to the negative seven, this is a bigger number. This confuses kids sometimes. So I'm gonna have one times 10 to the negative one and one times 10 to the negative one H pluses or H3O pluses and OH minuses. Is that water more acidic, basic, or is just neutral? Neutral because it's the same, right? We're not gonna work with that, but I'm just telling you it, it, it's temperature dependent. And if so I have something that is one times 10 to the negative one, what will be the pH, Marshall? One. And if we have a pop quiz, I'm gonna give you a number that is like that so that you don't have, need a calculator to calculate it because you could literally say negative log of one times 10 to a negative one and it'll spit out one, right? But I don't want you to use a calculator most of the time. So I'm gonna have one times 10 to the negative six. What's the pH in Lauren Bradley? Anna Bradley. Yeah. Anne Bradley, not Anna. Anna is on the other side. How do we measure pH? This is in your worksheet. We use litmus paper. Actually, litmus paper is an indicator that will tell us, is it an acid or a base? So it'll tell us the pH is high or the pH is low, right? So blue litmus paper will turn red when it's acidic. Red litmus paper will turn blue when it's basic. 
We have other paper like this one that will turn a series of colors. And depending on what color it turns, we know how acidic or how basic it is. So, well, actually, I don't know if this particular one is that. This is pH paper, but because this is telling me that whatever I have is acidic, it's turning red, right? But it all depends what type of paper that is. So normally, and we will have paper when we do the lab and you'll be able to see, I find this a little hard, confusing, not confusing, but hard to read the color for me at times. There are some that are much easier. Uh, Bromo Tamo blue turns what color when it's basic? We said blue, what color when it's neutral? Green, which is what we did. We took the water from, uh, <laughs> from blue to green. And then what if it was acidic? What color would it be? Yellow. For Bromo Tamo blue, it was yellow. So I told some of you to try to blow more and see if you could make it yellow, but it's hard. You have to have a much higher concentration than what you can normally do. Some pe some kids have done it. Is that BTB? Yes, BTB is bromo blue. Can you say that again? Um, do I have it here? No. bromo tamo blue. Bromo Tamo Blue. It is blue when basic, green neutral. No, it's green neutral. That's why water is basic. Because the water at Episcopal is slightly basic, right? And then it went to green. Some kids may have gotten it slightly yellow. I've seen it turn slightly yellow, like a greenish yellowish, with just people blowing a lot of carbon dioxide in the water. But you put a little bit of dry ice or you put a little bit of Sprite, yellow immediately, like yellow, yellow, not slightly yellow, yellow, yellow. So uh, Bromo Tamo Blue is an indicator. We have another indicator that is called phenophthalene that we are gonna use today. This indicator turns pink when it's basic and it's clear, phenophthalene. What is it the, like when we test our So for testing your pool, I know when I had to test a friend's pH, they had a colorimeter uh, and it was a little gadget that was based on the um, color that the water will turn. You have to put some chemicals and it, they, and it will tell you the concentration based on that. Sometimes people use this which is a pH meter, literally, it's just kind of like a thermometer, it'll just read the pH straight. You have to calibrate it, you have to keep them moist, um, but if you keep them okay, then they're fine for a long time, right? A lot of people use that. Sometimes they have, um, they have indicators that will give you a certain color, and then you will have a chart that will tell you what color means what, but they will give you a chart that is specific to the indicator they gave you. So it should come in there and it'll tell you, hey, I'm acidic or I'm basic. Uh, exactly what goes into, I mean, if they have a, I don't know exactly what indicator they use. I know in the colorimeter I had, I think the water turned darker red or lighter red and then the colorimeter will measure it. That was for the one I used. Um, so there are different ways of measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Um, this is fun. They use this in a spy movie sometimes because we know we can melt some metals with an acid. Melt, no, sorry, dissolve some metals with an acid. Uh, sometimes they talk about using these little tiny pens and dissolving all the bars, um, which sounds really cool, but I don't think a little bit of a very concentrated acid could literally take one of those things out, you know? But it does have science in it, which is kind of cool. It's always cool to see science applied to real life. If they were aluminum or zinc, they will definitely react to an acid. I told you strong acids and a strong bases. 
will are corrosive. Uh, we have here, I use hydrochloric acid to make that can, right? To eat up all the aluminum, but I could have used sodium hydroxide as well um, in order to do the same damage. Phenophthalene yeah. is clear. So we have it clear up until it, um, in the class, we're gonna have it clear up until it turns pink. And today we're gonna see it, actually when it's neutral, it's still clear. Uh, it just turns pink at a pH of, um, once it turns to a pH of, I believe eight to 10, it turns pink. Now, we're not gonna cover this definition, and this is what I was telling you, that it is in your worksheet when it says brostellary acids, you should have an HCl. Um, and then you should have this, and we're gonna complete it. So hydrochloric acid, the Cl is the negative side, the H is the positive side, electrons are attracted to this side, uh, so dipole, uh, we've seen. We're supposed to have it. You have the beginning. You have HCl plus water in that box where it says characteristics, uh. and you just need to complete it. You see it, everybody? So you have HCl plus water. So this is the H, and this is going to be donated because that's an acid, right? And what's going to be left? A Cl minus. So you are left with a Cl minus. The H2O is gonna behave as a base because in this case, again, it's also a dipole. It has a negative and a positive side, but it is going to gain a proton. So it's gonna be called H3O plus. Are we okay with this? Now, the new concept is, we know this is an acid. Let me do it red. We know this is an acid, actually a strong acid. In this case, water is behaving as a base, right? Because the acid is donating the hydrogen. This hydrogen is gonna go and it's gonna be donated to the base. So I'm the donor, I'm the acceptor. The donor is gonna be Cl minus. This is the conjugate base. So this is the acid, this is its conjugate base. The acid will donate a proton, the base in the opposite direction will have gained it. Hydrochloric acid will not be likely to gain it back because it is, um, it is such a strong acid that strong acids dissociate 100%, right? It doesn't want to go back. It How really do doesn't. Write that? Like, Excuse me? How do we write that? What you need to write is that you have the acid and the conjugate base, right? So when an acid donates a proton, it has a conjugate base. The conjugate base, if it goes it will try to go back as, a, as an acid. If it, it can't gain a proton and behave as an acid, I mean, I'm sorry, it can behave as a base. So the acid donates the proton, and now you have the conjugate base, which will gain a proton if you were to go in the opposite direction. I told you when you have a strong acid, it doesn't really go back. So we said that a Cl minus has negligible basicity because that's a strong acid. CL minus will have a negligible basicity. Conjugate. 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 Conjug
how do you recognize a conjugate acid base pair? Because one will have a hydrogen that the other one doesn't. That has a hydrogen, that one doesn't. That has two hydrogens, that one has three. The one I drew. That one has two hydrogens, that has three. So you recognize it because one has a hydrogen that the other one doesn't. So let me show you another example that is gonna make a lot more sense. We're gonna use one where the conjugate base is not gonna be weak. We're gonna use HF. HF is a weak acid, right? So if I put it in water, it is gonna behave as an acid, it has to. Um, is it gonna dissociate a lot or not? Very little, right? So I'm gonna put a very little. Very little. Most of it is gonna be HF in my solution, right? So if I have HF in a beaker with water, most of it is gonna be HF surrounded by water. a really small amount of, it's going to divide little tiny, that's your H3O plus, and it's going to have your little tiny F minus. It is going to dissociate slightly into the H and the F, very little. So if I were to redraw this arrow to be more what I think is happening, I'm going to have it mostly in that direction little tiny in this direction. That's not how we draw arrows, but I'm trying to show you most of it is gonna be that, very little is gonna be that. Every time this gets formed, it goes right back, right? Most of it is gonna stay on that side. It doesn't F minus plus the H3O plus. Very little of this, mostly that, right? So which one is your acid, Grace? Just the regular acid? Yeah. Uh, HF. HF is your acid? Which one is the conjugate base, Lauren? The F minus. Yeah? What's the difference between the acid and the conjugate based by looking at it, Zach. Um, yeah, the proton, the H, the amount of protons with the H. So that one has an H and that one doesn't, right? It's got one extra, right? That's how we are recognizing it. Now, water is behaving as what in here, Maeve? Um, an acid or a base? A base? Right? What will be the conjugate acid of that base, Kate? So the acid base pair for HF, which one is the conjugate base, uh, Ali? What is the conjugate base of HF? Yeah, F minus, right? What is the other conjugate acid base pair, Harrison? H3O. H3O and what? They need a pair. Yeah. What's the difference between them? One has a hydrogen that the other one doesn't have. Right? Lauren. Why did it go from an acid to a conjugate base? Like what does conjugate base mean? So when the acid loses the proton, right? 
then now if I'm the acid and you're the base, you gain the proton, right? But now you have an extra proton. So if you go in the opposite direction, you're gonna donate that proton, right? So the acid has the extra proton. It gets rid of it. It donates it, it behaves as an acid, it donates the proton. What is the F minus going to do? Immediately grab a hydrogen from water and go back to being HF. F minus does not, it's very unstable by itself. It wants to be back in the other side. So this is very, very heavy to this side. That's why when we see the reaction, we see mostly HF. Because whatever breaks tends to go back. There will always be some that breaks and that's what gives the pH to HF. But it is, it is more stable staying as HF than it is to be H and F. Same thing with this. We have acidic acid. I literally have mostly vinegar together, dissolved. Doesn't mean that it's broken up. It means that the vinegar itself, the, every molecule is surrounded by water, right? But there will be a very small amount that will stay broken all the time. Some will break and some will stay together, but there will be always the same amount that is broken. And those are what give the pH to my solution, right? Yes. So, for the, like, you know how you said that some of them don't like dissociate and you just have the H plus, the HFs and the H2s? It's so, like, why do you have this in the products? Because, like, if it doesn't, yeah, but like, that's the separated ones. Like, you know, there's very few things. Like, what about the ones that are still HF? This is, this is not a chemical reaction. This is, per se, I mean, it is a chemical reaction, but this is just a solution in equilibrium. Uh, it is not, um, if you put water, HF in water, you're gonna have this, and it's going back and forth, let's say it more that way, it's in equilibrium. It's going back and forth, back and forth, although it stays more on that side. Um, can you ask me your question again to make sure I, I address said, it? Like, why don't you have the Yeah, that. because it is at equilibrium, so I am giving you the right answer, mm -hmm. because it is at equilibrium. You don't have reactants and then you made all products, right? You will have that if you have sodium metal and then chlorine gas, those are your reactants, and then you reacted them and then you made salt. That's definitely your reactants and that's definitely your product. That's a non-reversible reaction, right? It will never go back. These ones, you have an equilibrium in which you have reactants and products in the same bucket. It doesn't go in one direction and it stays there. So, for whenever you write like equations, put the arrow be on both sides? When you write this equation, yeah, you wouldn't do this funny looking arrow. You draw it like that to show that it is an equilibrium, that you're going back and forth on this reaction. Um, and this conjugate base, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. So that's a, that's what I called it mostly to that side. Okay. Excuse me? Yeah. Now, this is a fairly strong conjugate base because it wants that back. It wants the H's back. When I have hydrochloric acid, like the one I was showing you earlier, um, we have HCl. HCl, when you put it in water, is all the way to this side, like almost nothing. It's so little what we want to go back that we call it negligible. So we said that the Cl minus is a negligible, has negligible basicity because it really does not want the hydrogen back. So we said they are strong acids because they dissociate 100% and we really think of them as just being 100% dissociated and none of the hydrochloric acid back. So all of it is dissociated. What is negligible? Negligible means um, if the earth is, 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 the, is my weight compared to the, if I'm trying to weigh the earth, right, by itself, and then I'm gonna give you the weight of the earth with me in it, it's negligible, right? Yeah, I do have a weight, right? But if you're measuring the weight of the earth, who cares about my weight, right? 
who cares about my weight at that point? Um, it's, it's negligible. So yeah, there is weight. Yeah, there is. I don't, I'm not vapor. You know, I'm not, not vapor. I'm not not existent. I, I do have a mass. I do contribute. But if I am on the earth, but I am not, it doesn't really matter because of this so many magnitudes greater than I am. Same thing with the CL minus. Thank you for that question because that helped put this in perspective. Um, I'll try to use that from now on. Now, if I have another one, if I have ammonia, we know that this is a weak base and we put it in water, what do we really have? Um, Emma. Uh, what does the ammonia do as a base? What do bases do? Okay. What is the acid that I want you to think every time I want you to think about an acid? HCl. And what does HCl do when it, you put it in water? I don't know. It's Associates. You have the H and the Cl, right? And then you have the H and the Cl. They break apart completely. It donates the H, right? Every acid will donate the H. That's what they do, right? So the acid will donate it to something that will behave as what? It's a base. It'll accept it, right? So Emma, if I have ammonia and it is going to behave as a base and it is in water, what do you think is going to happen on the other side? What's the ammonia going to look like once it accepts a proton? What is a proton in here? What are we exchanging? H H's, right? H's. So what's going to happen? It takes, a it takes an H. And how does it look like when it takes an H? An H. Yeah. So now it's going to be an H4. But again, a positive. It was neutral before. So it's NH4+. plus. What's the name of that? Ammonium, ammonium. And what happened to the water? It comes to H. Yeah? Is this water acting as uh, acid then? Since yes, yes. So ammonia we said was the base. So water in this case is acting as an acid. Because water, we're gonna see that in a minute, can be an acid or a base. That's the beauty of water. It can take or get rid of protons. So it's OH the conjugate base. So what is NH4 compared to NH3? Is the what? Uh, yeah. And now if I'm talking about H2O and OH, that's the acid. This is the conjugate base, right? The difference between them is a hydrogen. Um, if I put an H4 in water, it'll tend to do that. It, it'll behave as an acid. And then it'll have the conjugate base being an H3. So you do have, this is in equilibrium as well. This is not a reaction that just goes in this direction. It can go either way, right? The weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. Uh, that is a good question. Um, oh, like, no, because nitric acid, like if you were to have the acid in solid form, yes, right? Because you just have it as a solid. Very, very hard to have that. Normally, we have acids already in solution. They all have a concentration, right? But if you were to have the acid as a dry acid, it will be like like a salt almost, it'll be, yeah, you, you wouldn't have, you cannot have a pH unless you have the ions in solution. Yes? So H2O water is, a, is neutral, but if it's with a base, then it, it just acts 
So then water, let's look at water by itself. Water can behave as an acid or a base. And we'll do it first by itself. By itself is neutral, but it will lose or gain a hydrogen, as we had said before, right? That's amphoteric. If you put HCl, if you have water, and you have HCl, then what really makes HCl an acid is the fact that water will have now this. It robs the hydrogens from the water. I mean, it donates the hydrogen to the water, and it makes this. This is what makes HCl an acid. The fact that when you put it in the water, it will make this. This is what we're measuring the concentration of, the hydronium ions. The pH that we're measuring is of that. How many of these do I have in solution? So it'll have H3O and then it'll have the Cl minus, which does nothing in this case. So yes, water in that case is a base because it accepted and this, this is what makes HCl an acid. The fact that when you put it in water, you have that H3O plus that hydronium ion, and we measured that concentration, and that concentration gave us a pH. Now, if I had a base, <coughs> if I have, um, when I put it in water, the base is going to gain that hydrogen, it's gonna take it, and it's gonna make an NH4 plus, and the water, is gonna have um, OHs in the solution. So when I have an OH in the solution, I am gonna have less hydrogen ions. Or I'm gonna have a greater amount of hydroxide ions in the solution. So is that the Excuse me? So NH4 is the conjugate acid of my base. That's my base, and that's my conjugate acid. This is my acid in this case, and this is its conjugate base. Now, let's keep going. No. So we have that in here, that's what this is talking about. Sometimes we can have gases, acids in the, in the gas form and we can make solids, which I thought was kind of cool, so I added it here. These acids were in the gas phase, um, hydrogen, chloride, and ammonia. And all that white stuff that you see is literally the, the solid particles of ammonium chloride. This is another concept we want to look at it today. Uh, look at today, which is just like water, there are other substances that can be amphiprotic, or they're also called amphoteric for us. Amphoteric means that they can behave as an acid or a base, and amphiprotic means that it can donate or accept a proton. For us, this is the same definition because that's the only definition of acids and bases that we have is the bronze cell Larry. If you donate a proton, you are an acid. If you accept a proton, you are a base. So if H3O, H whatever, if it's uh, the bicarbonate ion, if it is going to behave as an acid, it's going to do what, Marshall? Acids do what? They what? an electron, that's a redox, a proton. a proton, there we go. So if it donates a hydrogen, what does it become? CH3. 
CO3 what, Colleen? Minus CO3 2 minus. Because it loses a positive, right? It's a proton. So it's behaving as an acid. And it becomes a CO3 2 minus. What happens, uh, Anne Bradley, when HSO4 minus behaves as an acid? So what do I have in here? What happens an, okay, when um, H2O behaves as an acid? when the bicarbonate ion behaves as a base? Um, Bailey. What do bases do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because if you gain a a positive, then that positive and negative cancel each other out, right? So it's not doesn't have a charge. What happens with Harrison when HSO4 minus behaves as a base H2SO4. without a charge because that proton cancel that? What happens, Ali, when H2O behaves as a base? Right? It accepts, it gains another hydrogen, it gains another hydrogen, it gains another hydrogen, right? As bases you gain, as acids you lose. But water was neutral, so it, when it gained a positive, it became H3O+. What makes it acid an acid or acid as a base? Uh, what it is reacting with to make it behave as an acid or a base. Like, you know, when water was with HCl, it behaved as a, um, as a base. But when water was with NH3, it behaved as an acid. Well, so these are three of the amphoteric? Amphoteric or amphiprotic. Um, to us, it's the same thing. Because the only definition we know for acids and bases is gaining and accepting protons. Um, amphoteric is for all the definitions. But there are other definitions that will be slightly different than what we have. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got so, it? what is an example of one that can only do one? HCl. You can't have HC, you can't have H2Cl. Mm -mm. HCl is, uh, Cl has one valence electron, it has the H, right? Most things are only one thing. This is hard to find. You have to have a negative, unless you're water. Most of them have a negative, and then they have to have an H. So most acids will have an H, but a lot of them won't be able to accept a proton, right? Or you have to have a lone pair to accept the proton. But to us, the only one will be water. I want you to be looking at the negative so that they can accept a proton, and the H so that they can donate a proton. Water does not have a negative. It has a lone pair, but you should so water is the only one that we're gonna have like that. All the other ones are gonna have a negative and an H, a negative and an H. All the other ones that we will talk about will have a negative and an H, just so that you can understand this concept. We okay with that? So we need a little break. And what I wanted to do for the break was see what happens. Um, uh, so can I sing? 